So, great. Now, let's go ahead and create an empty game object. And so, for example, if we had a game manager, I'm going to create another script called a game manager. Drag game manager onto this. Let's open it up. So, we can now use our listener and if you right click on it and go to refactor and then implement interface click that and then hit enter it will then create this thing for you which is now implementing this function that we described in our listener and all we're going to do is just print out something to our debug log time ran out. Okay, so our game manager uses this interface. So let's go back to our universal timer and we can drag him into our listener array or list. Alright, so back in our universal timer, after the time runs out, you can say for each game object listener in listeners and then I want to say I in time and then we're just going to get the um, interface off of this object if it has it And it's a little different than you get normal components because it's not a normal component. Okay. And now we can say if our component is not null, that means we were able to successfully take it out. And we can say component dot and then on ran out of time. So we can just call this method straight from here. So the reason you want to do this is that we can implement we can change the implementation of this however we want on any object that inherit or uses this interface so on another object it could use it entirely differently than just printing out this debug log uh, make sure everything's saved so if you play and it gets down to zero time run out which is from here. Alright, so what about subscribers? So we're going to go ahead and create another, uh, or not empty game object. Go ahead and create a cube. And this is going to be our example object. So let's go ahead and create C sharp script example object. And our example object is going to use the script. Okay. So let's open it up. And it's also going to implement the I you know, subscriber refactor implement interface and so this thing passes in a universal timer so we can get a reference to it so let's go ahead and make a private unit timer Univ timer. And we're going to initialize it here. 
So now that we can access our object, let's go ahead and create a method that we want to call. So we're going to create a method called add time so that we can add time to our countdown and our time in seconds plus equals our amount and then we're going to update our text with our new time in seconds. Now we also need to do something similar so that we can set up our uh, subscribers. So the first thing we want to do change this to subscribers and they use the i subscriber Okay, and then their method is initialize. And it takes this. Because this is our timer. Alright, so let's go back to our example object. We can get rid of these for now. And we're going to have a void on mouse down and then we're going to have a public float so a public float time to add okay so now we're calling our universal timers time to add time and we're passing in our time to add which will come to our universal timer and add time to it Instead of using an on mouse down event, you could also do it on destroy. If the object was being destroyed, you could also call it like this for a match three game, for argument's sake. Um, one more thing we need to do is we need to add this object to our subscribers. Okay. If you click play. I can increment the time as it goes down. And that's going to be it for this video. Um, I'm going to expand the system a little bit more later. Uh, but for now, that's it. Thanks for watching.